Yes, well, the positive scenarios are, are simply more far-fetched. I mean, one of the ones I've been playing with recently that I really like is that it ain't no big deal. It's just that time travel is discovered. It's a technological artifact. It's done in laboratories. The door is open on this little tunnel, and you just walk through. And history ends. History ends. <laughs> just bang, it ends. And that's the end of history. And people look back at it the way you look back at the Pueblos or something and say, you know, people used to live like that in linear time. Weird. All, str all, you know, waiting for stuff to happen and, and uh, all in this weird jelly of stiffened dimensionality. And boy, aren't we glad we've got that behind us. And to the people who were born in it, the previous mode of existence would be mere rumor. And it would be simply a technological artifact. I think that this actually, well, uh, after reading Nick Herbert's book, this uh, did I talk to you about the idea about the kind of time machine where he hypothesized this notion of a principle which works like this. Time travel is possible. Mm -hmm. Once it's discovered, you'll be able to travel into the future. When you're in the future, you'll be able to travel back into the past but no further than the moment of the discovery of the first time machine. Because before that moment, there were no time machines. And how can you take a time machine into a universe where time machines With don't nobody exist? nobody knowing it. Yes. So there is this physical barrier to time travel past the moment of discovery of it, backward before that moment. Well, I thought this was very interesting because I wanted to imagine, this is a practical apocalypse. This is a, a I wanted to imagine what would it be like if uh, this kind of time machine were discovered. And so I imagined that it's December 22nd, 2012 AD at the La Chorrera World Temporal Mechanics Institute and they're counting down and the lady tempo knot has been strapped into the time machine and they count down and they push the button and she sails off into the future. Now the interesting question is what happens right there in the next Millions moment? Millions of people arrive from a more Min populated yes. part of the universe. Millions of time machines arrive yes. from all possible Little parts capsules, of the future. Little capsules, sneaking through the bushes, pretending they were there all the time, <laughs> to asking see, for groceries. Exactly, to see the moment, this historic moment, the, the first time travel, which defines the barrier as far as you can go in your time machine. And people say to each other, have you been to the edge? It's 35,000 <laughs> years from here. Have you been back and seen Abraham, the Abraham machine uh, take off. Well, so I, I loved this idea, and I, and I held it for about 48 hours as a great gimmick. And then I realized that there was a peculiar problem with it, which has to do with the grandfather paradox, that one of these people from the far future could stop off on their way back to see Ralph's machine take off. They could stop off and kill their grandfather and set this paradox in motion, which has been the defeat of all time travel schemes. So then I had what I believe is... <clears throat> <laughs> a serious delusional breakthrough, <laughs> which was, I said, aha, there's something, oh, well, here's the model that you have to have to understand the next stage of this argument about the apocalypse. You know how the Bernoulli gas laws work. So imagine a, um, imagine a vacuum-filled elliptical tank we introduce a burst of oxygen at one end of this tank. Now, according to Bernoulli's laws, what happens? It diffuses evenly throughout and comes to a state of equilibrium, correct? Well, let's think for a moment of the planet. Now we'll make a geometric model one dimension down. Think of how today, 1989, on this planet, we have 
all kinds of different levels of cultural achievement, like we have to central Tokyo and Beverly Hills, but we also have Amazon rainforest people and pygmies and Berbers and all these people. Well, now if you think of cultural values and technological prowess and scientific uh, acumen as particles in this gaseous environment, then which way do you think values are moving in order to establish equilibrium? Well, the answer is obvious. More people in the Amazon are interested in what the Japanese are thinking than Japanese are interested in what Amazonian Indians are thinking. In other words, the higher state of cultural accomplishment sw is slowly swamping all less advanced states of cultural accomplishment for, without arguing about the you know, what these terms mean in terms of advanced, but one culture is swamping another. Okay, to return to the time travel problem then, a weird effect would ensue upon the invention of this forward-going kind of time travel that I'm hypothesizing. It can be described with several different linguistic models. One way of saying it is when the Lady Temple Knot goes off into the future, the, all of the rest of the future, unto, as Wordworth says, the, uh, in, as long as date shall give a name to time, all of that future undergoes some kind of collapse and happens instantly. Yeah. It happens instantly so that the most advanced state of human accomplishment, even if it be billions of years in the future and absolutely beyond our ability to imagine in any way, will appear one millisecond later on the other side of this barrier. So then I thought, my God, we're not inventing time travel here. What we're inventing is time death. A god whistle. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a god whistle. <laughs> you create this technology and it just takes the entire future history of the universe up until its conclusion and compresses it down into the next few milliseconds as the thing spins down and then you are face to face with the end purpose of all evolution and all process and all pattern and all energy, space, time and matter. I mean, you come out next to the big girl and uh, this would work, I think. This is not the edge of the West, it's the edge of the rest. <laughs> the edge of the rest, yes. <laughs> and so, um, there you have it. Uh, a complete fulfillment of the monotheistic intuition of apocalypse with, and what it is, it's wonderful. It's that we figured it out. It's like the universe is this huge conundrum and you're in there and you're suffering and it's just this weird dream and then there's science and religion and magic and you're fumbling and you're fu and then you slowly go toward this thing and it turns out it is. The stone is real. There is alchemical gold and when you grasp this to yourself then you know time ends, space ends, matter ends, everything ends and you go into the conclusion, the payoff, the jackpot. It's, uh, you go over the cusp and you uh, meet the management. Probably this hasn't happened yet. No, 2012, <laughs> I think. <laughs>